another week of just gathering as a church family. We're so happy to see you. If you're here in the house, would you rise to your feet? If you're tuning online, we welcome you this morning. Let us come together and pray. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord, as we're gathered here. God, we just want to give you a song of praise this morning, Lord. Everything, Lord God, we do, we want to give back to you, and we just bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would He fail now? He won't He won't Father, as that song says, you won't fail us, Lord. Not now, not ever, God. We know, Lord God, when things are shaking around us, Father, we can put our faith and hope and trust in you and you alone, God. Especially during the season, Lord, let us be reminded of the birth of our Savior, the one who gave us our all. God, we thank you, Lord God, that your goodness continues to run and to follow after us. God, if we don't see it, Lord, we ask that you would just open up our eyes, Lord God, and reveal to us your goodness. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Oh, I have been in the goodness of God. And all my life. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything.
music fade And all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself It's not what you have required You search much deeper within And through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made when it's all about you it's all about you
Good morning, church. Let us continue to worship God this morning through our giving and our offering. And praise God for this time of year with Christmas coming up next week. You know, it's often pretty easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, quote unquote. But let us just be reminded that this season is all about Jesus. He truly is the reason for the season. He's the reason why we are here. He is the reason why we are saved from our sins. He is the reason why we can have a intimate and personal relationship with God. And he is the reason why we can just rejoice and give him all the praise and glory this morning. And so let us tune our hearts into uh, what God has for us and tune our hearts into him, for he is worthy of our worship, worthy of our adoration, worthy of our praise. And so this morning, we like to worship him through our giving and offering. If you'd like to give this morning, there's a few options that you can uh, give through. You can either put your tithing and offering in the envelope, which is located in the seat in front of you. If you want to give uh, through your tithing offering through a check or cash and put in the offering envelope, just hold on to it. And at the end of service, just drop it off in the blue buckets behind you. If you want to give online, you can go to bbchouston.com. On that webpage, there's a red give button in the upper right hand corner. Just click on that and you can give through PushPay. Lastly, if you want to sell uh, your offering, all you have to do is send your Zelle to give at bbchouston.com, and that's another way to give. And we just praise God that we can all gather together to worship Him, and praise God that as people continue to faithfully sow into what God is doing here, whether it be the people here or those who are watching online, we can continue to share the vision that God has given us to share with the world, for the world to love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. Amen. And so at this time, let us bow our heads as we just give this time to the Lord. Father God, we are truly grateful. We are a grateful people who are just here in this place to give you all of our adoration, all of our worship, all of our praise. There is no one else that we would rather worship than you. Thank you, God, that you have sent your son Jesus to die for our sins. And Lord, on this you know, month, this particular month, as we look forward to Christmas Day next Sunday, we are reminded about the great thing that you did for us, God, that you made a way for us to be forgiven of our sins. And that's by sending your one and only son, Jesus, to, into the world so that he would die for us and be our acceptable sacrifice, God. We thank you, God, that no longer are we a people of sin, but you have brought us out into uh, from, you have brought us from darkness into this marvelous light. We have been forgiven and we just rejoice this morning for that. We thank you. We pray over the offering and tithing that's being collected. We ask God that you will bless it and that it will be used to further your kingdom. Show us, Holy Spirit, where we can sow what um, people are offering right now. We bring you our best and may it be used to expand your kingdom and share the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone that we encounter. And we just pray, God, that you will continue to use us to share with the world how they can love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. And God, we continue to pray for everyone here and everyone watching online, God, that during this season, God, that you will continue to bless them beyond measure, that you will just be with them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for you, for you are Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you that you are with us through it all, the ups and downs. And God, we just thank you that you are a God of purpose, a God of hope, a God of love. And we thank you that you are with us 
in every season. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. We have a few announcements to go over this morning. If you are here with children from the ages of nursery age to the sixth grade, at this time, our children's ministry is taking place in the other building behind us in the COC. So if you want to walk your child over there, there'll be a dream team member to check your child in so that they can go and join the other kids to worship God. After our service this morning, please join us in the foyer. We will have a great time of fellowship and refreshments. We'll have kolaches, donuts, um, coffee. So join us out there for that as we just fellowship with one another. At, um, at 11.30 this morning, we will have a time where, um, as you know, we shared about it last week, that VBC Houston has purchased stuffed animals and toys to deliver to the kids at the Texas Children's Hospital here in Houston. And at 11.30, if you would like to help us like wrap and package these gifts, please join us there in the COC, again, which is, which is the gymnasium behind us. Uh, from 11.30 to 12.30, we will package these gifts and praise God that we are able to bless the kids um, you know, at that hospital in this way. As you know, we have a team that before COVID happened, we would go out uh, to the hospital to pray for these kids. We would walk into the rooms where they're at and pray for them and just share that love and hope of God to them. But because of COVID, they haven't let us go back. But this is one way that we can continue to share God's love with those in the hospital, especially this year, since many of those kids will be celebrating for the first time Christmas in the hospital and not at home. So it'd be great that we can just gather together and just love on these kids and praise God for that. Last announcement is that next Sunday is Christmas Day. So Christmas Day, December 25th, falls on a Sunday this year. And so we would like to just remind everyone, invite everyone back next Sunday. We will have a special Christmas service at both our 9 a.m. service and 11 a.m. service. It'll be a great time to gather together to celebrate Jesus coming into the world. He is the reason for the season. So please invite your friends for that. We will have a lot going on, a lot of activities. After the 9 a.m., 11 a.m. service, we will have a fellowship meal, and then we'll have a lot of activities. We'll have Mia's mini pancakes, Java coffee. We'll have a train outside in the parking lot for the kids and adults to enjoy. We'll have a bounce house. But keep in mind, this bounce house is only for the children. So us grown people, unfortunately, that's not for us. We'll have face painting and just other uh, activities out there. So it'll be a great time to enjoy this time with our family and friends. And this is a friendly reminder because I know our pastors would you know, share this message too. Be in prayer for who you can invite. Because I know we all have people in our lives who we love to share the gospel to. And sometimes it's kind of hard to get them to come to church on you know, any regular Sunday. But something about Christmas Sunday, I think people recognize that this is about Jesus. And so it's you know, a great opportunity to invite them because we know that every time someone can come into the presence of God, that could be a life-changing moment forever, right? Not only for them, but for their family and maybe for their future kids. And so be in prayer for that. Invite them. Be a great time. Let's worship the King uh, this upcoming Sunday, next Sunday. So with that, those are the announcements for this morning. Please, let's give a warm, warm welcome to Pastor Sam as he shares the message this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. Come on, y'all know I like it a little different in here. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. This morning, I want to shake things up. I feel like things got to be a little bit different. And, and trust me when I say I know. For those of you who are in the room, I know. Because I can feel it and I, I understand too. But let me, let me help you understand something even more important. The gathering of believers, the un understanding of encouragement from others, it really helps. So this morning I ask that you stand to your feet and I ask that you go and find one person. Give them a hug, give them the best greeting that you can give and, and, and be purposeful about it. Don't just take the person next to you and be like, I'm done and then sit down. Go find someone that you actually mean and go say hello and give them the best greetings that you can give. Before you take a seat, I ask that you guys move forward, move closer to the front. If possible, move forward. It's, it, it's okay to, to sit up close. We don't have to fight for the last row. There's plenty of seats in the front. Go on and move on up. Go on and move on up. All right. Awesome. This morning, I hope that you guys are ready because I am. 
I hope that you guys are excited to be here in church because I am. I hope that you guys are ready to receive something from God because I am. And the reason why I say this is because I know that I personally need today's message. I know that I personally need a touch from God today. I know I personally need an encounter from Jesus today. This past uh, month so far, we've been starting this series called Heaven on Earth. And the biggest thing about understanding heaven on earth is this, understanding that when Jesus was born in this world, we got a glimpse of what heaven was like. Heaven touched earth. And what I mean by that is in the world that we lived in, in the world that was filled with sin, we had a chance, we had a, 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 a glimpse, we had a, a vision or a, an idea or a model to look towards of what heaven is going to look like. The beautiful thing about what heaven is going to look like, you could see it through the life of Jesus. You could see the changed lives from one place to the next. You could see people's lives from healing happening. You could see breakthrough happening. And this morning, what I feel is that there's a lot of breakthrough that needs to happen this morning. And I don't know why, but I, I could sense it the moment I was on the drums and we were worshiping and the thing that broke me to my core, it broke me in my heart, was the moment we started to sing Heart of Worship. Look, I don't know where you guys have been this week. I don't know where you are spiritually. I don't know what's going on, but trust me when I say I feel it. I'm here. I know it. Because the thing is, I'm feeling the same thing you're feeling too. And as I look around the room, one of the things that I can already know is this, is many of us are asking God, I'm so, you're, you're saying this to God, is God, what did I bring to you? I felt like I was distracted this week. I felt like my heart was distracted this week. God, what did I even bring to you? You know, I want to share something personal before I even get into my message, and, and, and it's going to set the tone for what it is today, is this, is that last week's message, if it didn't hit you enough, I'm going to give it to you again today, is that we serve a God who can do the impossible. We serve a God who can take your impossible and make it possible. We serve a God who can take those finances that look like they're not going anywhere and he can help them move towards the direction that you need it to go. We serve a God where when your marriage looks impossible, he can make it possible. We serve a God who, when your family is going through tough times, that it looks impossible for there to be breakthrough, but he can bring breakthrough. We serve a God where if you're working in a place and you feel like you need to get out of there or you feel like you need something different, he can move and open doors for you. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that I choose to serve. I don't choose to serve a God that's in a book that does nothing. I choose to serve a God that touched earth. He touched earth by, by giving us a sacrifice, giving us a, a, a person to look like, to look at, and also to look like is Jesus Christ. Look, I don't know if I'm preaching to myself today, but, I, but I, that's enough for me. And the reason why I feel like I'm, I'm preaching to myself today is because I truly need this message today. And the reason why I need this message is because last week's message, it hit me so hard that I kept thinking to myself, God, I know you're going to do it. God, I know you're going to do it. God, I know you're going to do it. But what happens if I fail? God I, God, I know I could start a business, but what happens if it doesn't do good? God, I know you're going to do this, but what happens if this? And God, I know this is it, but what happens if this? I got an opportunity to speak with somebody this week, and, and they were on my podcast. This is a good friend of mine. And he said something, and I clipped it this morning because I knew I needed to throw it up there, is that we need to stop living in the what ifs. And what I mean by that is we serve a God who doesn't live in the what ifs. He's certain about everything that he says. Not a single thing about God is, is what ifs. I, I don't know. If God says something, it's going to happen. And something I wrote down is, let me tell you something. What is going to happen is that God will bring breakthrough in your life. What is going to happen is God is providing for your family financially or providing for you. What is going to happen is he will mend your relationships. And what is going to happen is that your business will not drown. It will be blessed in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen in this place? Please. This is the God that we serve. This is who we're talking about. This is what men says, the reason for the season. This is why we celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate Christmas just because we all get gifts. It's nice to get gifts, but I'm telling you something. The best gift that we ever received was that relationship we can have with Jesus. That's the best gift of all. Look to somebody next to you and say, nothing's impossible with God. For some people that need to really believe it, that is the quietest thing I've ever heard y'all say. Look to somebody next to you and say, nothing is impossible with God. 
But does that mean something to you? Does that actually mean something to you? This past week, I, I, I got just all of these testimonies coming from Simple Church. So many of you guys had so many testimonies. I heard that there was breakthrough down in, down in uh, old Pearland and breakthrough in new Pearland. I don't know what y'all are going through, but let me tell you this. This is what I know for sure, is that the same God that y'all are talking about, I'm talking about too. The same God that y'all are serving, so am I. And if I can stand up here and tell you that he can make the impossible possible, and if Pastor Khan can stand up here and say that last week, that God can make the impossible possible, let that reassure you that God is making the impossible possible. And for many of you, this, this, for many of you today, I, I just need you to look to your neighbor and just say, shake it off. Come on, push them, shake it off. Push them, shake it off. Come on. Wow, for the first time, I'm allowing you to push somebody in church and y'all are just sitting around. Push them and say, shake it off. <laughs> Amen. Because here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. We're, we're, we're allowing ourselves to be stuck in a place where our minds are doubting what our Lord and Savior can do. Today, today is literally one week away from Christmas. It's one week away. Think about it like this. What is the whole buildup of every message up until Christmas? Why do, why do churches make it such a big deal up until Christmas? Because it is a big deal. If you're not looking forward to Christmas in the sense where lives will be changed, I think you're still in the child mentality of, I can't wait to open up gifts. Where we are in life right now, where we are in life currently right now, those who are in this room, those who have ears that are listening right now, what you should be looking forward to is come Christmas, there are going to be so many non-believers coming to church for the first time. There are going to be so many people hearing about the gospel for the first time. There are going to be so many people who are going to unwrap a gift from our Heavenly Father that is salvation. We got to be proud about that. We got to be happy about that. Look, I'm coming from a heart that is singing the same song as you. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, God, because it's all about you. And I don't know why that I've made it about me, but it's not about me and it's all about you. Literally, when the bridge comes to the part that says, I'll bring you more than a song, it hit me so hard because sometimes we think that the only thing we can bring God is a song. And the days that we can't sing or the days we don't feel like singing, we didn't bring anything to him. But I'm trying to show you that bringing something to God, it's about our heart. It's about our life. It's not just one aspect of worship. That's one gift to give to God. But it's your life. And what do I mean by your life? It's your mindset. It's your heart. It's your belief in him. You can't just believe in him on the good times. The best time to believe in him is the bad times. That's when you can truly say, I need you, God. See, in our tough times is when you can really see how good your relationship with God is. Because it's so easy in the, in, the, in the good times. Anyone can praise God in the good times. Anyone can cheer for their sports team when they're winning. But oh, the moment they lose and you don't watch them anymore. The tone today is different. The expectation from my heart today is different. I look around the room, and if there was a mirror, I'd be looking at myself, saying, Lord, there are so many broken people in here this morning. And I just feel it. I feel it. I feel it. There's so much brokenness in this room that I can literally sense at the moment that we started singing this song, because at, in that moment, all of our hearts finally opened up in worship, the moment the song was played. Because it's truly all about you, Jesus. It's truly all about you. I look around the room and I'm starting to see hearts opening. I look around the room and I start seeing people's weight that they carried into church fall off right now. And you see what happens when we just enter into his presence. I want you to stand to your feet. You're like, man, we're standing, we're sitting, we're standing, we're sitting. Yeah, we are. Stand to your feet. Close your eyes. I'm just going to ask Christina to play Heart of Worship just a little bit and, and just give God a moment. Just worship to him. 
Either you sing, either your heart is projected towards him, whatever it is. Torn, you mind throwing up the words? When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. And I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself, it's not what you have required. Come on, church. You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back And I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you Sing that it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. God, this morning, that is our prayer to you. God, that we're sorry for what we've made our relationship to be with you. God, we're sorry for maybe even the mindset of what we have this week, the brokenness that we have before you today, Lord, is, is truly our, our, our heart of worship, Lord. God, I come before you broken today saying, I need you. God, I come before you saying, Lord, my family's broken, we need you. God, I come before you saying, Lord, you are the reason why I'm here today. You are the reason why I sing, and I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church, you may be seated. Good morning. Even after that, not even a good morning back. Good morning. good morning. Come on, church. It is so good to be here. You know, for the last, uh, for the last week, and I'll start out to set the tone like this. Last week was my first week having a break off in, since Revival Conference. I learned such a valuable lesson last week. From Monday till Friday, I rested. Boy, I rested the wrong way, though. From October till last week, I was in God's presence every single day. But I took a week of rest for the first time, and I did it wrong. One whole week of rest left me feeling so tired. One week of rest left me feeling so empty. And can I share something with you that I learned that's so important? as I rested one whole week without being in God's presence. I took a, day, I took a week off. I, I, I heard it from everybody. Pastor Sam, Pastor Khan's back. Rest. But my rest was being outside of God's presence, and I did that wrong. I felt so empty throughout the week. I, I had no drive to want to wanna just <clears throat> hear anything or talk about God or, or anything, and, and it was hurting me. Every single day, I would go to bed hurt, deep down inside. And you can ask my wife. Things were changing in my life from one week of being outside of God's presence. And the importance that I learned from that is this, is I never want to be outside of God's presence. I personally stepped out of God's presence. His presence was still there. But I personally stepped out because I decided I was taking one whole week off. Do you know what that looks like? Man, I went back to college, Sam. I watched Netflix all day long. I snacked on anything I could find. I laid in bed because I said, oh, let's just rest because my body was tired. And I started to lose myself in rest. How weird is that? And actually, I got a reality check when I went to the gym this past, or last week, and I went to the gym, and I said, man, I, I, I called Jeannie, I said, man, I need to just get back into, back into it. And so I did the worst thing that I could ever do. I went to the gym. And other people like Anthony are looking at me like, what are you talking about? That's the best place to be. I went to the gym, 
and I went back to old Sam mode where I was beating myself up in the gym. I looked at myself in the mirror and I looked at myself and how disgusted I was with who I was. And I'm not talking about the outer appearance look. I'm talking about in my heart. I looked in the mirror and I just said, who are you? How can you go from two months of talking about God every single day to this past week, not even a moment of your time was given to praise God? This is real. This is reality. This is me being as clear and as transparent as I can be with you guys. And I looked at myself, and, and all of a sudden, I started doubting everything, everything. Started doubting and doubting and doubting. Am I the only one that was in that place this week? I don't think so. Because there's so many things that are in our life that as we were moving forward, and I could see it clear as day, the moment that my eyes were open, the moment that I got back into God's presence. Clear as day, I could see exactly what was happening. And I was reminded, I was reminded by the championship that we're about to have in a couple of days. I was reminded that the enemy was just playing tactics. I was reminded of what life was like or life would be like outside of God's presence. The, the, the thoughts in my mind were not trusting in God or the thoughts in my mind were not believing in him for certain things that were happening in my life. And all those things just, and, and, and this is what it could be. It could be that all of a sudden, oh, school got so busy now. Oh, work, work got too hard now. Oh, my family, oh, all this stuff. Or the busyness of life just hits you. And you forget to be in his presence. We forget to, to steward a, a place of being in his presence every day. And this is what I learned at the end of the week. Is that being in God's presence is the actual present that we got on Christmas Day. That is how we are that was the beginning of us being able to have that true relationship with God. That was the journey. Because here's the thing, we all know the story of, of Jesus. That gift that was given to the world gets taken away by the world. Gets crucified on a cross, but it had to happen. And it was like the best gift that was given to us that actually gave back to us. And then we were freed from sin. And then we were forgiven. And then we were given all these things. And it was a reminder to me this week, <clears throat> or last week. I sat on the second row last week. I hear Pastor Khan get up here, start preaching. Starts talking about how we serve a God who does the impossible. And he talks about all of these things on the pulpit. And it hit me so hard because... I'm sitting in that chair, listening to all these things, and I'm thinking back about my week. How could I even give one day without being in God's presence or praising him if I know that he's a God of the impossible? He can make the impossible possible. Many of you guys, as I look around, I don't know what you may be going through. I don't know if it's deep relationship issues. I don't know if it's finances. I don't know if it's work. I don't know if it's family. I don't know if it's your kids. I don't know if it's your marriage. I don't know if it's school. I don't know if it's your friendships or whatever that it is. But let me tell you this, all of those issues and all of those things, bring it before the Lord. If you can bring those things before the Lord and let him renew your mind, you'll no longer come to him with, God, this is my issue. God, this is my issue. But you will say, God, how can you help me in this situation? That's reverting back and helping us understand who the God that we serve is and what he can do. I think that many of us get to this place where we forget what it actually is like now that heaven has touched earth. We forget what it's like that we can call on our heavenly father on a regular basis. I'm talking about calling on Jesus even when you're fighting with your spouse. I'm talking about calling on Jesus in, even when you look at your bank account and you're like, I can't eat. Call on the Lord. I'm talking about whenever you're, 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 you're dealing with issues at home or you're dealing with issues at work, call on God. And we're in this place now where we've received this gift that is continually in our life, which is our relationship and our salvation through Jesus Christ. We have now the rite of passage to be able to speak to our Father. And we didn't have that before, but because of Jesus... I've been waiting for this message, for me to be able to preach this message. It was funny because I even thought this 
when Pastor Khan came back, I was like, man, this is the, he's going to preach the message I want to preach. And then I forgot that in the schedule of how the series goes, the message I actually wanted to preach was the third week. And it hits hard because, and you can ask Jeannie, I, I went up to my office, it took me not more than like 20 minutes to put this message together because I've been like crafting this message in my heart for so long. And it hurt me to my core when I allowed the enemy to speak in my life for a week and I almost wanted to just say, I, I, I just need to take a break. And it brings me to tears even right now to even think that those were the thoughts in my head. How could I give up on a God who has answered every single thing that I've asked? I can't. I'm here this morning before you, broken as a leader to show you I had a week of learning. And this is what I learned outside of that, after that week. And it blessed my heart so much and I hope that it blesses yours. This morning, this is my title and this is my question is, is God on your Christmas list? Because many of us have a Christmas list that we're buying presents for every single person. But is God on that list of who you're bringing gifts to? Many of us can think, oh, I'm going to be real with y'all. Boy, my, my table at my house is filled with gifts that we have bought for the nieces and nephews. Filled. Every day. Gina's like, we got another package. What? Yeah, I know, I, we, we're buying stuff for the nieces and nephews. I'm like, okay, okay. Filled. There's Amazon boxes on top of boxes, on top of boxes, on top of boxes. And when I put this message together, it was from even the beginning of when we started this series, is bringing us back to the perspective of what Christmas is about. And that title in itself, it hit me, is, is God on your Christmas list? Are you bringing an offering? Are you bringing a gift that is worthy to our Heavenly Father? Because here's the thing, in the very beginning of it all, there were three men that did it. And they search and they search and they search for Jesus. They searched for him. And they brought him a gift. I want to read you the scripture. Matthew 2, verses 9 to 11. It says, when they heard the king, they departed. And, and, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, and they had come into the house. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasure chest, they presented him gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They're bringing Jesus gifts. They don't even know him. They know of him. They don't know him. This morning I ask you, what gifts have you been bringing to Jesus daily? What gifts? Because some, some of y'all, oh, Jesus doesn't need my gifts. He got everything. Okay. You want to go there? How old are you right now that you still ask for gifts for Christmas? It's nice to get gifts. Let's just be real. I like getting gifts. I'll be the first to say it. Half of those gifts on the table at home, they're mine. I'm just kidding. Or not. Um... But getting gifts is nice, isn't it? Let's just be honest. Christmas comes by. You think about your wish list in Thanksgiving time. We're already preparing ahead of time of things that we want to receive. But put it in perspective of our Heavenly Father. Do you get a gift for, for, for your parents? Sometimes getting gifts for your parents, honestly, is probably the, the hardest gift to give. Because you're like, one, what do they not have that I can give to them. And then it goes down the list. You're like, another coffee mug? Man, open up their cupboard. You've given them coffee mugs ever since you were five. Another tie, another dress, another purse. All of these things that we can give to our parents. And you know what the craziest thing is? They still open that gift and they say, thank you, Kong. I love you. Thank you, my son. Thank you, my daughter. I love you. That's the only thing. Come on, be real. What parent wants macaroni, you know, glued onto a piece of paper that you hang up on your, on your refrigerator? I say that now, but when my son's born, I'm probably going to have it all over the house. But they're so happy. They're so happy. What about our Heavenly Father, though? 
Man, we take all month long to be on Amazon, going to the mall, going to whatever place we can go to find all the gifts for X amount of people on our list. Some of y'all got like five siblings like me, and those siblings got kids, and those siblings that, that have kids, some of them got picky kids that they want certain things for. Like some of my siblings, you can't get colorful things. They got to be certain colors. I'm like, bruh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all are all laughing because y'all know what I'm talking about. And they're not in here, so I can say that, except one. so picky or certain things to the point to the T exactly of what it is that they want their kids to have check this out God knew exactly what it is that we needed to have so he sent us Jesus he gave us the best gift flip that in reverse what gift can we give to our heavenly father that he doesn't even what what gift can we give to our heavenly father that he already has though but what do we still offer him that he'd still say yes it's our macaroni on the refrigerator It's our act of love that we can give to our Heavenly Father that He cares for so much. You know what your macaroni is? You think you're the only one that worships God? You think you're the only one that sings a song to Him? To me, I say, that's macaroni because everyone has, everyone does that. But you know what makes that macaroni a little bit different? When it comes specifically from you. Your heart of worship is specifically a gift to our Heavenly Father. Your words of affirmation to your father, the words of giving praise to him, is specifically from your mouth. You know the difference between hearing, I love you, mom, I love you, dad, from all the kids, or hearing it specifically from, from individually hearing it from each kid? Everyone can write on a Christmas card, I love you, mom, I love you, dad. But to be able to say it with your mouth, to be able to embrace them, to hug them, to give them that love, that's what's important to them. And to our Heavenly Father, the same. Scripture that I want to read with you for my first point, what gifts are you bringing before God, comes from Romans 12, verses 1 to 2. And this scripture has been hitting me. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay, when we can go back and look at the scripture in Matthew 2, what was the first thing that the, this, what was the, first thing that the wise men did? It said they fell down and worshipped him. That was even before gifts. They fell down and worshipped baby Jesus before giving him gifts. That is our first gift that we can present to our Heavenly Father. That is our first gift. This morning, I I hope that it's speaking to your heart like it's speaking to mine is, are you giving him a sacrifice of praise every day? Every day. Man, it's not easy because there are days that we get busy. I get it. But it spoke volumes to me when I did it, when I didn't do it for a week. It hit me hard. It, It showed me how important being in worship and being in God's presence was. Are you giving him your time? Oh, what a good gift. Anybody in here that your love language is quality time? Hmm. So you know how important it is when someone spends quality time with you. You know how important it is when people don't just, hey, how's it going? And then they leave, but they sit down and talk to you. Quality time is important with our Heavenly Father because let me tell you this, there are a lot of people that just come to church and they leave and they don't spend time with him Monday through Friday or Saturday. But Sunday, when they sit in church, they consider that quality time because they're sitting in the message. But let me tell you something. What's quality about that? Maybe only the time that you worship because that's the only time that you're singing to God or your voice is projecting. Right now, you're just listening. Right? This is giving God of your time, but are you speaking to him right now? Are you spending time with him? Let me tell you the difference. Even with me preaching on a Sunday is nothing compared to the moments that I spend sitting on my couch reading my Bible by myself with God or speaking to him in my living room by myself just me and him. That quality time, it changes my life so much more because that's what helps me to get to this point to where I could do it in public. If I didn't do it in public, I'd be too embarrassed to do it here. Let me rephrase that. If I didn't do it in private, I'd be too embarrassed to do it here in public. And ask yourself that question is, what about when it comes to telling the world about your relationship with God? I'm telling you, it makes it easier when you do it in private and then you can do it in public. It's just facts. It's practicing your gift. It's practicing talking to our Heavenly Father. It's practicing giving Him praise every day. And when we go to do it in public, it's a lot easier. 
The last one is this, is are you giving him a thanks offering? Well, what's that? Are you saying thank you for the things that he's providing for you on a daily basis? Or are you like a child on Christmas Day that opens up something like clothes? You're like, ah, clothes, thanks. I used to be like that. Every single Christmas growing up, my mom would get me this gift that was the same gift every time. And I would say, thanks, next gift. And she always would write something on here. Sam, to Sam, from mom, be cool. And you always knew what it was. It was a pair of Nike socks. Every time. Growing up, I was like, socks? Now where I'm at in life, you can ask my wife. I have nothing but bunches, a bunch of bunches and a bunch of socks that I personally buy because I don't know why, but I lose my socks somehow. You throw it in the dryer, one comes out, I don't know where the other one went. And here as an adult, you ask my wife, what is the one thing that I probably buy a lot of? Long socks, short socks, ankle socks, no-show socks. I love my socks, they're awesome. And now I think back now, I'm just like, mom, where's my socks? As I get older, she changes the gifts. I'm like, mom, where's the socks though? Like, you know, back then, mom, white socks? I want black socks, why'd you give me white? Now I just wear white socks, white tube socks, long white socks. And I wear them with my sneakers and like, that's the, that's the thing, like it's nice. But you know what's crazy? Back then I was not grateful for those gifts. Sometimes we we've tend to forget the things that our Lord does for us every single day and, and we're not grateful for those things. Is that speaking to anybody in this room? Because you know, sometimes at the job that you're at and you're complaining about, remember that time that you were on your knees praying for a financial breakthrough and he opened up the door to give you that job? Man, I hope that hit because I was in that place. I was like, Lord, give me more. Lord, open up the doors for me to have my own personal business. And sometimes I'll go record videos. I'm like, oh, I'm so tired of recording videos. My heart went from gratitude to ungrateful just because of my circumstances. And I had to change that and say, Lord, thank you so much for what you are giving to me. And that grateful heart is actually what opens the door for more. When you can have gratitude to what your Heavenly Father gives and He sees that the doors open so much more. And it's crazy. I, 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 this past week, I, I didn't think that my podcast that I did this past week, I didn't think that it was going to hit me as hard as it hit me. Now here's the biggest reason why. My friend Alex, or his name is Dr. Tubio, and he's super famous in, on the social media world, and he's a chiropractor and all these things. I asked him one time. I messaged him on Instagram. I said, hey, man, would you like to be on my podcast? It was like an act of faith. Right? I was just like, I, I might get turned down. He might be like, nah, dude, like, you know? And the thing is this, is he's never in public or on camera said that he was even a Christian. Never. I just knew the first time that I met him, I was like, when I first watched his videos, I was like, man, like, something about him... I know that. I know, I, like, that seems familiar. Like his personality, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's like, that's like what a believer would talk like or how he would act. And when I go to my first, like, uh, adjustment, when I see him, he's wearing a, a shirt from a church that I know, and I'm like, huh. And I asked him, hey, you a believer? He's like, yeah. And he just starts to share with me. A couple years down later, I, I, I don't see him ever again, right, a couple years later. But we talk on, like, social media here and there. And I message him, hey, would you like to be on my podcast? His first response is this, yeah, man, I'd love to. I was like, wait, what? Why? <laughs> I went from asking him to questioning why he wanted to be on my show. And you know what he said to me? He said, God's been speaking in my heart to use my platform to share about God. I was like, what, really? This man's, like, millions of views on TikTok, like, 800,000 on YouTube, like subscribers on YouTube or something like that, like crazy numbers, like just all these crazy numbers. I'm like, why do you want to be on my show? I've got like, shout out to my 30 like followers in this room right now. Like I appreciate all of you guys, right? And, and, and the funny thing is like, I asked him like, why, why, why? And instead of asking why did somebody want to be on my show, why didn't I think back about the word that God gave me when I was standing here, that many people would be attracted to the things that you're doing for God. See, our Heavenly Father knows what's best for us, 
And the thing that was best for us was our relationship that we could have with Jesus and understanding of who Jesus is and then that sacrifice that Jesus would make so that we could live the life that we can live today. Our Heavenly Father knows. And so back to the thing about the podcast, why it hit me so hard was I just sat back and like listened to the things that, that Dr. Tubio was saying in the scriptures and, or with scripture and also on the podcast of what he was talking about with his own personal life. And, and one of the things that he spoke about is purpose. And he really wanted to drive purpose in. And he was talking about how being a Christian in the workplace. And he was talking about all these different things. And he talked about marriage. And he talked about a lot of like tithing and all these things that he had to find out on his own. He's like someone who I see as what I would deem to be successful in the world that we live in today. He's successful on social media. He's successful to the point where he has like three clinics opening. Like it's crazy, right? And I look at him and and one of the things that he said to me is, I think so many of us are living in the life of what ifs instead of understanding what is. And like that hit me so hard because we live currently in life right now where we question who God is every day, where we question if God wants to use us, where we question if God knew what he was doing when he created us, or we question all of these things. But instead of living in the what ifs, understand what is. What is actually happening now is that God loved us to the point where he gave us Jesus to die on the cross for us. What is, is God wanted a true relationship with us and we couldn't meet the mark. So what he did was get, given us the ultimate sacrifice. That is the what is. What is, is you are called. What is, is you are a child of God. What is, is you can talk about God to your friends, to your family members, to anyone that you please or anybody that you want to, you can talk to them about God. Yesterday, I I, I had an experience yesterday. It was cool. I met someone on social media and, and the only reason why was because of my forerunner, and I saw that he had a cool forerunner, and that he was from Houston. I reach out to him, come to find out he's a believer. I'm like, what? He not only is a believer, he has, he has a business in social media, in photography, and videography. What? God, you're bringing all these people into my life. They're all successful in those things. I go and meet him for the first time. We go, we go um, off-roading, right? He's got this nice forerunner. I'm going off-roading and all this kind of stuff. And we just talk and get to know each other. And one of the things that I see in his life that, like, just seeing who he is, I, I just wanted to share with him what God was doing in my life. I just wanted to just be a blessing to him and just share with him. Like, there's, a, there's something that God has showed me and revealed to me, especially with my business and with the podcast and all these things, is I used to think that it was impossible for me to reach where other people are. I used to think it was impossible for me to even make an income off of what I wanted to do in life. I thought it was impossible. And in the moment that I had faith to believe in God, all these doors started opening up for me. The moment I had faith to believe in God, all of a sudden now, I have the influence to talk to people about what it is that God's doing. Why? Because it's my testimony. My testimony is sharing to people that I used to not have this mindset and mentality. I used to have the mentality like, God, are you going to do anything? Help me with my finances. But God opened up the door for my finances to be helped. Like, it's incredible. And I was able to share with him. And why is that important? Because, one, if you're offering a gift to God every day, which is a gift of praise, a gift of of words of affirmation or your time or whatever it is, being in his presence and being amongst him and, and, and spending time with him personally, it translates to your public life that you have. We sat outside of a parking lot in front of a Dairy Queen, not eating Dairy Queen, just sitting outside talking about God, about work, and it was like shooting the breeze with him. It was, I don't even know him. Yes, he's a believer, so it's a little bit easier to talk to him, but even talking to believers who are random strangers that you've never met before, it's still difficult. I'll be honest with you. I still stood there in front of him just speaking into his life about things that I believe that God can do for him. And and it was so important because the week that I didn't, uh, the week that I wasn't in his presence, I didn't talk to a single person about God. And that hurt me. Remember, I was the leader. I was the pastor that said every single day I want to do something for God. And it was tough to swallow that pill. But you know what's crazy? I had a time that was refreshing and it really put perspective back into my life. I went back to my roots of hearing from God. And uh, it was crazy because last week I was surprised, or not surprised, but last week it caught me off guard that the whole Atlanta worship team that like, I, I hang out with and like, I've spoken to, they all showed up in, in the foyer. And I was like, what are y'all doing here? 
And they're like, remember, Pastor Sam, we said we we're going to be here? My weeks were just crossed. And then the very next day, they wanted to hang out. And so we did a, a, a hangout at Mike and Kim's house. And at the very end of it, we had worship. And I, I didn't lead much of worship. I allowed them to. And I just received and being in God's presence. And then I, I said, hey, guys, let's, let's, let's test hearing from the Holy Spirit. And this is what I do. I usually just have music playing. I usually open up my phone to my notes. And I just start writing out whatever I feel is coming from, uh, from, in, from within my heart. I just start writing. And usually when I do that, it's exactly what I feel the Holy Spirit is speaking to me at that moment. It's weird though, right? The reason why I say it's weird is because it, it, it's always spot on. Word for word, and I'll read it for you. This is coming from my notes from my iPhone. It says, Sam, dot, dot, dot. My son, I've missed your heart. You make me happy when you spend time with me. I miss being with you. I'm proud of all the things that you, you are doing. Thank you for pushing my presence and my love to the church. Continue to give it 100. You are my son, and you are called, and I love you always. That's the words that I got during that time spending with the Holy Spirit. That's the reassurance that our Heavenly Father gives us. That's the best gift you can ever receive. Is that your Heavenly Father is proud of you. Even though you're going through tough times, He's still proud of you. He's still there for you. Doesn't He deserve some praise? Doesn't he deserve a word of gratitude? Doesn't he deserve your time, your quality time? That's the presence that you can give to him. This message for leading up to Christmas is for us to recall or remember what Christmas is even about. The salvation that we receive from Jesus. The relationship we can now have with God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And it all stemmed from the birth of him. He came into this world with a mission. Emmanuel, God is with us. He came into this world with a mission for us to never be alone in our life, ever. My next point, which is my last point, is this. Is how will you share the gift that Jesus has given us to the public? We're in the season of giving. We're in a season of giving gifts. Give someone the best gift of all, which is being able to receive salvation. Look, if you tell me that the number of people that you know in your life who are believers to non-believers outweigh each other, where you know more believers than non-believers, let's change a couple of things. First, then that means, well, not that many more people you need to tell about Jesus to. That's pretty easy for you, right? But let's flip it also. Maybe get out a little bit and talk to more people about Jesus so you can have more people. And the reason why I say it like that is because every single one of us in this room, we come encounter with a lot more people than we think we do. For some of you guys, you're like, nah, not me. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. I just, I just go to work, and I just, I just talk to myself sometimes. First off, we can pray about that. Second off, when you go to work and you feel that your Heavenly Father is speaking on your heart to go and talk to one of your coworkers, don't shy away from doing it. It's Christmas. There are not that many people, to be honest, who are in a spirit or a place of joy. Some people are hurting right now, and they need to hear about our Heavenly Father. I know, because here's the thing. Christmas and holidays just amplify what it is that people go through on a regular basis. But you know what it amplifies in my heart? It amplifies what I go through on a regular basis. I praise God on a regular basis. I give God glory on a regular basis, and it's amplified even more now because there are so many people who will be receptive to it during Christmas. Let me tell you something that's true. It's time and time again, every single year, church attendance is the highest on Christmas. Easter and Christmas, highest church attendance of many people of, of who have maybe are not strong in their faith or many people who don't believe in God, who are brought by a friend, or maybe people who are just don't normally go to church and they come to church. Attendance is super high, right? So you know automatically that people are all in the place of already wanting to receive something. They come to church, maybe they want to receive just a cool Christmas, you know, experience, right? They come to church, maybe they're missing what it is that they've wanted all year long. And, and guess what? Christmas is only a week away from being the last week of the, of the year. And for some people, they're just trying to get it together still, right? Before the new year, to get themselves ready. Why not help people get there? Why not invite people? 
it blows my mind till this day, and I'll always talk about it, how Anthony was like, yeah, my friend that I brought to church, like, I just met him at the gym and I asked him if he wanted to go to church, and he came to church. As simple as that. As simple as many of you guys who have shared testimonies. Someone, someone shared this testimony. I saw it actually on her Instagram. And it was actually Elizabeth. Elizabeth said at a simple church, well, like, I'm not really great at speaking in public, but I want to pray that God uses my life somehow to bless people. The very next day, she put that, she, or, or that same day, she put action towards it. She wrote a jar of, like, encouragement. She just put that jar at work, and people were able to grab one piece of encouragement, and they read it. That was encouraging for me to see. Why? Because she didn't let the things that she thinks hold her back to stop her from telling people about God. Look, I hope that something speaks to you is this in Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 9. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Verse 8, this is powerful. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Merry Christmas. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. But the only thing that we can boast about is the gift that we got from our Heavenly Father. See, the the crazy thing is this is, yeah, we get wrapped up in the holiday spirit and all these things, but don't forget. Don't forget what it's really about. Don't forget what you can actually do for people. Don't forget, instead of giving someone that $5 gift that you could give any time in your life, Step out in faith and speak to them about God. That would change their life forever. So what do you do? How will you show God's love? I challenge you, church. Pray for someone this week. Write them a card. How, you, how will you bring someone close to God? Share God's love to a coworker. I challenge you. Share God's love to a family member. And this, is a big, this is a big gift you can give somebody. Forgive someone in your family that's really difficult to forgive. And share your testimony to a family member or friends who are not close with God. My last point is use this holiday to bring someone closer to God by inviting them to a Christmas service or taking someone out during this Christmas break for lunch and speaking into their life. See, the thing about our relationship with God, the gift that we have been given, it's a gift that you can continually give. It's a gift that doesn't get outdated. It's a gift that you can always know for a fact that you don't have to know anything about them, but you know this gift will always be perfect for each individual person. Church, stand to your feet. This message is a reflection, just like this whole month leading up to Christmas. It is a reflection for us as believers to understand what our Heavenly Father has done for us. It is for us to have an understanding that he has given us the ultimate gift. And I ask you the question today before we close is, but what gifts are you offering to him? So church, bow your heads. Take a moment. Talk to him. As you talk to him, one of the things I'm reminded by is even the story of of Cain and Abel, right? Right? Are you giving him the best? Are you giving him the first of your life? Or is he at the very bottom of your Christmas list? Open up your hearts to just speak to him. Bring bring it back to perspective that God is important in our lives, that he needs to be first. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this message today. And Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us even in this season. Give us the boldness to be able to speak to somebody about you this week. Give us the boldness to pray for somebody this week. God, we ask that you heal the broken hearts in this room just as you healed mine this morning. Lord, we love you and we thank you because you are good. You are so good, Lord. You know specifically what we need, when we need it, how we need it because you're a good father and you know that about us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Church, I hope that you were blessed by this message. Go and have some donuts and kolaches, but I do want to offer this time because I feel like people need prayer. Pastor Khan and myself will be here to pray for people, for those who really need it today. I'm here for you guys. So is Pastor Khan. We love you. Can't wait to see you guys next week. See you later.